um, room tour so I could give you some explanations to my system. Um, this is the calc water top off gravity fed to the sump. There's a the sump. That's the 175 Rubbermaid uh, water mix station, frag tank. Um, I've been growing acros for 10 years uh, successfully and um, no major catastrophes, just things I want to get in check. Um, I do set that up for quarantine if I, if I need to. I've got a 40 breeder sump under there and uh, I'm able to isolate the, that system. There's my RO set up, uh, quite large, capable of production of uh, over a thousand gallons per day. And um, the reason I wanted to speak with you is about uh, algae reactor versus algae turf scrubber. Uh, I do run a large skimmer, um, perhaps oversized. The system total volume is maybe 350 gallons. I have a 120 display upstairs and we're in the basement right now. Uh, I do have plans for a 300 gallon um, display frag tank that will go um, out in this basement area, uh, peninsula style. Anyway, um, this, is the, uh, this is the effluent from the algae reactor. I feed it into a sock. Um, I haven't calculated in a while, but we're, we're doing about 30 gallons per hour. Uh, through that system, through the algae reactor, uh, it is it is fed by way of manifold. That's the manifold uh, off of my uh, main pump. Um, main pump returns upstairs uh, to the sewer for water change to the um, calcium reactor. Um, carbon and GFO. If I ever use it, UV. Etc. Um, I also have a chiller. So I, I'm doing, a, I guess, maybe 30 gallons an hour uh, on last measure coming out of the algae reactor. Um, so here's the setup for the algae reactor, and I could use some pointers here because it's, uh, lack of a better phrase, not working. This is all custom aluminum with a heat sink. The game plan was. Um, yeah, you know, to keep light out, and I put this light on it. It's a reef breeder uh, light, and I have a lid for this reactor. It was a calcium reactor, very large, uh, twelve-inch calcium reactor that I retroed for this purpose. Um, kind of a pain in the butt. I had to get some custom fittings because these Chinese threads, etc., didn't work. Well, my success has been quite limited. Um, I've gone through a few balls of algae of Cato from um, store-bought, and this is what I get. Uh, it's hair algae, basically. Um, I don't know why I have such trouble growing Cato. I don't know if it's a spectrum, if it's a flow, or what. Um, so this rig is just, I, I tried to get it suspended. The Cato ball would sink down to the bottom and just kind of sit there, it never really grew. So I just kind of rigged this up. Um, essentially my game plan was with a lid, uh, I was going to do an internal light, kind of like you see in Pax Bellum, fixed to the lid with kind of a, a, a plastic cage to hold the algae and a heat sink on top of the on top of the lid. I also thought I'd be able to push a lot more flow through this thing, but um, I had problems with it kind of overflowing. And so, you know, this is about the best flow I could get through this, given the fact that the lid's open and, uh, or there is no lid and, um, you know, kind of is what it is. Maybe at that 30 gallon per hour mark, something like that, 20 gallons per hour. I thought it was, I thought the keto, death was a result of poor light, then I thought it was poor flow, uh, now I don't know. So far as parameters go, again, I, it's not like I'm, I'm struggling to grow acros. Um, what, what really is um, the issue is, why can't I grow this dang Cheeto if everybody else can? 
Um, so parameters, my phosphate I tested last night with a, a ULR. Um, gave me a 48 parts per billion. That's like 0 0.13, 0 0.12 parts per million. Nitrate on salifert is consistently, you know, five, 10 parts per million at the most. And that's all quite stable. I do water changes. I do a 50 gallon water change every two weeks. Um, I do have a sand bed upstairs, uh, display tank. I, I siphon that every two weeks. Um, I'm sorry, once per month I siphon that sand bed. Uh, but I do water changes every two weeks. So, uh, why can't I grow Kato? Is it the algae itself? Is it the spectrum? Is it the flow? Uh, and if I were to do a, a turf scrubber in, in lieu of this reactor, given the nature of the sump and the size of the system, again, around 300, 350 gallons, moving up to 600, what should I be considering? And uh, I really am not a, I try to keep salt creep to a minimum, I'm kind of on that. So, uh, hence the reactor, you know, I just, I'm kind of more of a reactor type of guy, I guess. I've gone through bio pellet reactors, calcium reactors, you name it. So, there's a quick overview. I appreciate your thoughts on helping me grow this Kato or consideration of a turf scrubber in lieu of this reactor. If you find faults with the way the reactor is, let me know. Thanks a lot.